to do something a little different here for my post movie vlog stuff. Um, normally, I just uh, record a live stream or live video of me off a webcam or something like that, and I figured just to stream a little bit more often, um, I would do this a little more vlog in a more vlog esque manner. Say, um, so here I am giving my thoughts on Heaven's Feel Part Three. And in the process of uh, also the kind of Heaven's Field trilogy, and for that matter, the, the Fate trilogy. Um, so there will be spoilers here. I can't really talk about Heaven's Field Part 3 without getting into spoilers of Parts 1 and 2. And for that matter, spoilers for the other two parts of the series, the other two routes of the game. Uh, Heaven's Field as far as the route in the original Fate Stay Night game, was always kind of been intended to be played third. From what I have information I have gathered, this route, the route was not available to be played until the other two routes, uh, Fate and Heaven's Feel, had been played in the first place. So, yeah, it's kind of a situation of, like, you are expected going in to know what has happened in the previous routes and in the process so in the pro so well I will talk about all so I'm going to kind of talk about all of them here long story short um each of the three routes of the game focus on a particular character character not just in terms of a romantic interest but also like or kind of do pair of characters terms of backstory um fate route focuses mainly on saber and her background as arturia pendragon some hints on what this universe is the fate universe or nasuverse version of the grail legend was like and what saber what arturia pendragon went through um most while saber has a prominent role is a very significant role in the Heaven's Field, in the Heaven's Field, well, yes, Heaven's Field, but also in the Unlimited Blade Works route. Her story is very much not in the fore at the same extent. The same thing is the case with the route for um, Unlimited Blade Works in terms of. Um, Focusing more there on Rin Tosaka and on the, her servant, Archer, and what his legend is. Specifically, that Archer is Shiro. Shiro of the future. Um, and, sure, and Archer, or Emia, all caps, um, basically trying to prevent his own legend from coming to pass. In fact, both uh, Saber and... Emiya's, like, plot lines are, to various extents, meant on preventing their legends. That the idea that being a hero is a traumatic... Being a hero, being a heroic spirit, is a traumatic experience. They are people who have faced trauma and want to undo it and want to be rid of it. And... Continuing with that theme, dealing with trauma is and facing trauma is very much the gist of Heaven's Feel, because that is the arc of focuses on Sakura, and there's no there's no tap dancing around this here. The other Sakura is very much far too much in the back burner, far too much a ancillary character, a um, in some cases almost background scenery in a tragic respect in the other two routes of the game. And it has led to Sakura getting a lot of crap in terms of fan surveys and, oh, she's the least popular character, which is BS, um, and various other factors. And it's it's unpleasant and it's crappy because Sakura's story is one which has a lot of pathos and should be and needed to be given time um it's and while 
the Fate adaptation, the, the adaptation of the Fate route by that was done by Studio Dean, would toss in some bits from Unlimited Blade Works in there to fill things out, because the Fate route was also kind of shorter and a little more exposition heavy, because the Fate route was kind of intended to be played first anyway, and meant to spend a lot of time doing world building. The They didn't take anything really from the Heaven's Feel route, and so this this trilogy of films and turn the feel route what they're adapting brings Sakura's story to the fore, brings Sakura to the fore in a way that she really wasn't in any of the in any of the other routes. In fact, the only other fate work that has been adapted to the screen, um, or fate or spin-off work that has been adapted to the screen that is gives her more screen time, more character development, more character growth. Uh, not character growth, but character um, screen time is your chance to, to, to take her place on the stage is today's menu for the Emia family. That's that's kind of tragic. That's kind of sad, because her, her story is good, and her story is tragic, and she there's a character who's had to deal with a lot of crap. Some of this we have been hinted at in various forms in previous works. Fate Zero and uh, the Unlimited Blade Works adaptation got across that Sakura and Rin were sisters and that Sakura, Sakura was basically sent off to the Mato family, which was her... which was... Her on her mother's side, and basically her, her grandfather on her mother's side, and sent off to live with them, and led to her getting badly abused. And I can't be really tapped down anymore. This these films, I should I am. They are R-rated films. A lot of the fate works are R-rated. Like have R deserve our ratings for blood and violence and that sort of thing. The Heaven's Feel gets its R, earns its R rating also due to, or rather, it also merits a content warning on top of the usual blood and violence due to heavy themes of abuse. Because, kind of getting the theme of weird, unintentional theme of the movies I've been seeing in theaters recently, of uh, films and works about women who have been traumatically abused. Um, Sakura was abused, sexually assaulted, derived of her bodily autonomy um, by, her by her grandfather and also sexually assaulted by her adoptive brother. And I think that part of the, the reason that makes me upset somewhat or annoyed somewhat about Sakura getting pushed to the back burner in the other two routes. And even with, like, Sakura's brother Shinji being depicted as just more kind of a petulant brat than a, uh, than the jackass that he is in, um, unlimited, or just even written out entirely in unlimited, in, um, Hep, in Emiya family, is because we then don't touch on the fact that Sakura has endured trauma, and in both of our, both of those other routes, she's still enduring. Like, like she's not free; she's not necessarily safe. Zoken is still around in um in the um fate route, even though. Shinji is dead, and Shinji and Zoken are still alive, very much so. Uh, Shinji is hospitalized and badly injured, but Sakura and is dependent on Sakura for care. But Sakura is still trapped in an abusive situation. This the Heaven's Feel arc is the only arc of the only route of the game where she gets out. Where the end, where where the the end goal and the end result of the 
of the trilogy is Sakura gets out of an abusive situation. She goes through hell to get there, but she gets gets out. Um, it's not quite the same level of and to bring about go back to Black Widow. It's not quite the same level of women helping each other out of um, abusive and pet and vile and petulant situations that that well um black that 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 black widow was because ultimately what helps get sakura out of this is a male character is is shiro and certainly rin is there and has a equally important and very prominent role but she's not the driving force in the same way that for example to but Black Widow that Natasha that um, Natasha Romanoff is so yeah the, that said the writing in these films has been very good it's the original Fate Stay Night was a like the, the original game original release on PC was an arrow game it was a game that had pornographic sex scenes and most adaptations of the game after the fact took a lot of took that out I mean, to a certain degree to the game's benefit because as people who have played the japanese versions have said and particularly even like when they originally came out japanese audiences were saying this game's great man kitakanasu writes a really awkward kind of crappy uh <laughs> The awkward, crappy, uh, uh, sex scene. Oh boy. Uh, we still have our good old fashioned classic, um, uh, big fate fight scenes, um, over the course of this. And in the third film, some, um, it, we had, we get them. We had our, we had a big fight with Saber against, against Ryder. And get Ryder really able to show what they can do, and she can, what she can do in a way that she hasn't in any of the previous works because she didn't have a master with power. She was um, attached to Shinji instead of um, Sakura. But, like, for this show, definitely the fights are less of the point to an extent. Um, like, we get big, flashy, and we get big, flashy kind of animation moments. We get um, we get a fight between uh, Kirei Konamine and Assassin one on one. We get um, and him finally going up against um, Zoken Mato. We get a battle of sisters between uh, Sakura and Rin. But ultimately, for all of this, it, like the conflicts here are very much more personal, and so like. The big confrontation, like the like confrontations, are much more emotional than action packed. They have are they're on an emotional and um, narrative and character level than they are about how will um, Saber defeat Gilgamesh's uh, Gate of Babylon um, or that sort of thing. It's and I appreciate that. Oh, I remember that. It was talking about the sexual sex and sexuality side of things. Um, so the other two routes wrote out, like, particularly took the tack that the later console releases of Fate Stay Night did, and the PC re-releases, which is, you can't have the, the explicit sex scenes on consoles anyway, and they're not written that well either, so we're not going to, so what we'll do is we'll rewrite them into something else for the console releases and keep that rewrite for the PC, later PC releases. The Heavens Field films that no... This is actually kind of important here. We're keeping the sex in. Uh, like part two has a part two. Um, Chiro and Sakura have sex. Camera. And it's a narratively important moment and a emotionally important moment for those characters dynamics. And I, th and I think it's, very like like it it's important i think that they kept that 
in a way that it wouldn't be as big a deal or as emotionally important necessarily as keeping in the sex scene in the ruined church with Saber in the fate route or uh, the sex scene with uh, Rin at the attic at her place in Heaven's Feel route. Those felt that, oh, we are obligated to have sex. We are narratively and due to the nature of the form, obligated to have sex scenes on these routes. And whereas here, like, no, this is the, this is actually important. This is in the moment. This is a, it is not the emotional climax of these characters' relationships, but it is, um, it is Sakura showing a tremendous sense of emotional vulnerability to Shiro. It is, there's sometimes in works of fiction where, where the sex scenes are, like, again, like the three routes, where the sex scenes are unnecessary, where they're gratuitous, they are there to confront, to get a R rating, they are there because the writer, screenwriters, or director cannot, don't, aren't necessarily sure how to handle a sense, convey a sense of physical intimacy or um, emotional connection in a romantic relationship between two characters in a non-sexual manner. Here, it fits, and particularly, again, considering Sakura's backstory um, to a degree where, where as we've seen over the, over the two films before that, and even in with some flashbacks here, Shinji's house and Shin, sorry, not Shinji, Shiro's house and Shiro by extension are a place where she is safe, where she feels safe. It, it, it is, it is truly her safe place in a way where she can't be at home dealing with her brother and her grandfather and that sort of thing. Um, and particularly so because we, we kind of get across in this film with and by and that and as this film impacts and relays um or kind of reflects on the other two routes we see that sakura before on the on the when she sees the holy grail war coming into the house because she's we we know in this route she's fully aware of what the hell is going on um, and is likely very much aware of what Saber is. But seeing that in the house that is her safe, that has been in the past her safe place, is in an extent bringing some of that trauma back to her. So, um, having her show that vulnerability in, um, the second film is a big deal and that sort of thing. And like the, we get a bit of like, we get like one scene of a nudity. Like we'll get a set another sex scene in this movie, but we get a scene of nudity with Sakura and it doesn't feel gratuitous. It doesn't feel like fans, shameless fan service or pandering. Um, it felt like, in the context within the film, Sakura experiencing a sense of rebirth after the years and years of trauma that she's experienced. It happens in the moment where she's basically becoming free of it and be free of all of that crap that she's had to deal with over the past 10 years of her life. And Again, that that is that makes it executed tastefully, executed well. There are faults in this film, um, certainly. Probably like when I came through the first two parts, particularly when they like very casually took out Gilgamesh in the first part of the movie. Uh, okay, this series, this trilogy, is going to be the. Kire Kodamine is barely relevant show, or at least the Kire Kodamine's villainous plot is off the table. That he's go that 
This is the this is the world where Kiri Kodami, this is the timeline where Kiri Kodamimi is forced to actually do his job as proctor of the Holy Grail war and not just go boohahaha. I shall uh, unleash the greater grail and anger mind you and un and wipe out all of humanity because I am a nihilistic douchebag. <laughs> That part of the plot is out of the pic, as I I thought was going to be out of the picture. Once Gilgamesh was at the table, once Lancer was out of the table, once Kire had no servants at his at his command to help him in this. No, we once again, as the other two routes, it all comes down to a direct conflict between Shiro and Kire Kotomine in some manner or another. Um, it's less flashy than the stuff in, um, than his fights in some of the other work, um, or going out in the fate route or anything like that. The other two also, it actually has less catharsis to it, I would say. The other two routes have him going out in a certain sense of catharsis, providing a certain sense of catharsis. Um, in the fate route, he is stabbed. To, he was he is killed by Shiro using the dagger that he in turn you to kill um, Rin's father, and a dagger that was given to uh, given to Shiro by Rin. That is like it's catharsis and closure, it enclosure, and it is Rin perhaps unintentionally getting revenge by proxy or avenging her father's death. And the tra and some of the trauma that was put pushed upon on her mother um, due to the actions of Kirei Kodamine in by proxy through Shiro. Awesome. Uh, in the Unlimited Blade Works route, he is killed by Lancer because or Unlimited Blade, Work Blade Works animation. He is killed by Lancer, avenging the death of uh, Lancer, basically avenging the death of his original master. At the hands of Kirei Kodamine, and, and opening the door for uh, Shiro and uh, Rin to finish off Archer and then defeat Gilgamesh. With both cases, Gilgamesh being the effective final boss. But now the factual final boss is off the board, but okay. What are they going to do with Kirei here? He's. A bit of a he's he's still a bit of a wild card, but he's I thought oh he's not able to do his usual shenanigans with the plot to so we won't so the final confrontation will not be Shiro versus Kirei Kodamine Rin versus Kirei Kodamine um eighty one else versus eighty one versus Kirei Kodamine it's going to be like Zoken as the primary as the final confrontation or it's just going to be a direct confrontation with with uh, Sakura. And the answer is no. Um, it, once again, we get a, like, the, the, the final fight is just Shiro and Kirei Kodamine just having a knockdown, drag out, slobber knocker, not even bothering to use flashy powers, fist fight. As like, oh okay. Well, well, Kodamine gives Spouts his nonsense philosophy, his nihilistic philosophy horse crap of I want to see what happens when Angra Mainyu is summoned into the world, wipes out all humanity, and I want to know what he thinks about that. Will he feel sad or will he feel happy? Some people are like, I'm just a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't even know what happened if I caught one. That sort of nonsense. Like, I like Kirei Kodamine is actually much more of I want to watch of a some people want to watch the world burn figure than actual Heath Ledger the Joker is. So, um, 
But other than that, like it works, like it all works well. The the other like disappointment I have uh, with this is like a little one, but it has certain good significance. It's like, the Heavens Feel route, the feel adaptation, for I think it was good good narrative reasons. Um, like I brought in a few characters from the uh, Fate Zero. Uh, for the um, for the final episode with Shiro and uh, Rin at the clock tower, specifically uh, Waver Vel adult Waver Velvet, aka Lord Elmaloy the second, and that was like a really good emotional scene, and it did a great job, kind of of setting up. The moment where Shiro realizes that you no, know, he is going to go on the path to become a hero of justice, and that which will ultimately lead to him becoming Archer, and that this would lead to him leaving Rin in the process, kind of coming to the realization that that's that's where he is, he wants to go. This is the route he wants to take, and where he wants to go, and basically talking to another Grail War survivor related to that. And in the the fate in the uh, Heaven's Feel route, from doing a little research in advance coming into it, I knew that we were getting a crossover that in the source material there is crossover with um Garden of Sinners with the um uh, woman who Yogi Yushiki is um, working for. I'll have to bring this back up just to refresh my memory. Been a while since I watched Garden of Sinners. Uh, with the character of. Um, here we go. Uh, Toko uh, Toko Ozaki. There we go. Um, uh, where, with her thing being um, human doll construction, that sort of thing, and her sister being who also appears in Tsukihime, um, being her, her specialty being glasses to help with um, mis dealing with mystic eyes, uh, having created that character's uh, glasses. Uh, the thought it was going to have was, oh, we're going to get some crossover. Like, like, that character is going to show up here because they show up in the game for reasons where Shiro, long story short, um, ends up having to fight, ends up having a certain, certain things in common with a character from uh, Full Metal Alchemist and ends up needing some assistance out in a manner other than uh the <laughs> then uh then just a seal on a suit of armor um or so something more practical than that i would say and i thought we would get like that cameo for that for that character and <sighs> Ultimately, that doesn't like that character does not come up, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so ultimately, um, like it's fine. Like, the, the, the film is good. The film. To bring this all to sum up, I very much enjoyed this film. I, I, I will also say it was worth the wait that I've had coming into this because this film, Heaven Field Part Three, was supposed to have its big Fathom event screening 
the week that lockdown came happened in Oregon. And so I've been waiting um, 18 months for this. And I'm glad I finally got to see this. I'm definitely planning since I picked up the, the uh, Blu-ray box sets um, at Right Stuff for the for uh, for the other adaptations um, from UFO Table, I'm definitely going to pick this as far as for Fate routes and of uh, Limited Blade Works and Fate Zero. I will probably be picking up the Blu-rays of this trilogy as well, probably using bezel thing to make to handle payments over the extremely exorbitant charge it costs that um that Aniplex does for their Blu-rays brief commentary Blu-rays ish. Um but anyway, that's that and, and this is also kind of the ending of an era in the Nasuverse sense because the most of the other like significant Nasuverse faced bait adaptations so far, um, outside of the movie, outside of the Heaven Field movie, well, the other ones we've gotten, um, like after Unlimited Blade Works and once they started the Heaven's Field films, we got also got kind of going semi parallel. We had today's menu for the Amia family, but then like Apocrypha and um, Fate Extra and the um, Lord Elmoloy case files were all done by their studios. They did a good job kind of nailing the visual styles of um, that UFO table set, the mark and the expectations that we have as audiences from UFO table's work um, with the Dasuverse starting with um, the Garden of Sinners and continuing to these films. But, like, there's, like, unless we get more of the season of Ambia Family, you know, yes, please, the manga's still going, and even of the chapter, of the volume, earlier volumes that have come out in the U.S. so far, there's still stories and recipes that have not been adapted yet. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the last outing that um, Nuvo Table has in the Nasuverse, unless we get, like, Unless we get like a bunch of new adaptations of Tsukihime from um, UFO Table to go with the Tsukihime remakes, because they're splitting that up into multiple games, which makes sense because the original game had a ludicrous number of routes. And. <laughs> um, which makes it all the more bizarre that they tried to adapt all of them in the 12 episode Tsukihime television series when for the other, when for the previous two regular routes of Fate Stay Night they spent 24 episodes on them like honestly the only reason i think that that three movies worked three 2 hour movies worked for Heaven's Feel because Heaven's Feel is a shorter route because there is less backstory you have to establish narratively you can and what there is you can do much better or you can do using cinematic techniques like montage and flashback without having to have on-screen text to convey that information so that pretty much covers all the bases for those watching the um edited archive of this on youtube or edited version of this on youtube I am interested in your thoughts on the film and on uh, Heaven's Feel. Um, not just like this film, but the Heaven's Feel trilogy in general. And well, would, would you watch a UFO table adaptation of A Route or Routes of Tsukihime? Um, that would let me know in the comments. <laughs>
uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 